This is the new front line of an ever-changing battle against COVID-19 and a growing list of more contagious variants. This is the area where the specimens come in. We were given rare access to Stanford's clinical virology lab, where scientists work 24 hours a day testing, then sequencing thousands of COVID positive samples. The hope is using advanced robotics to try to scale up to doing thousands of samples every day. In the first two weeks of operation, the lab screened nearly a thousand specimens, discovering several instances of the Brazilian and UK variants. This is an example of a, a real-time PCR instrument, and this is what we're using to identify the mutations that are associated with these variants. Dr. Benjamin Pinsky leads a team of viral detectives who are deconstructing COVID's genetic code, a crucial step to determining how fast the virus is mutating and raising the red flag on its ability to resist vaccines. If you see them all pooled together, or many of them are occurring in the same community, we can infer that oh, maybe there's a new variant. The race to identify then isolate variant positive people is crucial, as the CDC predicts these mutations will be the predominant strains in the U.S. by spring. Yes, I think the new variant could lead to another surge, and that's part of why we're monitoring so we can be prepared for that. We are a bit behind compared to other countries, but I think we can catch up rapidly. Overall, the U.S. ranks 35th worldwide in sequencing the virus. There is a huge effort by CDC and state and local public health, um, as well as many academic medical centers to catch up. Um, and that's what we're trying to do here at Stanford. A renewed effort to gain ground in a sprint for survival, as doctors and nurses on the front lines know all too well. From what I've heard in the news uh, from South Africa, from Brazil, um, the variants are definitely something that we have to be very uh, aware of. Um, right now, we shouldn't put our guards down. And this is when we have to be extra careful because of the variants. Well, the virus replicates so fast. So I think we could look even that there'll be more variants in the future. Right now, we have about a handful. We know that they're more easily transmissible, maybe not more severe disease. But as long as we're looking at a situation where more people might get COVID, that's certainly very problematic. Back in the lab, they see understanding these variants as the first step towards getting back to normal. It certainly is concerning and it's something we want to be able to know about so we can either adjust the vaccines or um, change public health recommendations. It's been, it's been very gratifying being able to detect these. Well, they say everything is bigger in Texas and vaccination sites are no exception. The Texas Motor Speedway is now a 16 lane mega site, one of the largest vac vaccination hubs in the nation. NBC News correspondent Morgan Chesky has more from Fort Worth. Yeah, Allison, it's really a special day for so many Texans arriving here at Texas Motor Speedway uh, to cross a, a finish line, really, in more ways than one. After having to endure this pandemic, they're coming here today uh, to get those vaccinations. Both Moderna and Pfizer are offered here, uh, and every shot making such a difference uh, in bringing this pandemic to a close. And from a, a scale size, uh, we're talking about a massive operation. They can vaccinate 1,000 people of an hour, up to 10,000 each and every day. And the sheer efficiency of it is what's really most impressive to witness firsthand. People are able to come in, check in after having booked an appointment online. Then they pull up to these tents, receive that shot in the arm, and then they park and wait for 15 minutes to make sure there are no adverse side effects. And the president of the Speedway here tells me that this is the perfect place to do exactly this. We're blessed with great infrastructure, roads around us that feed the property, great big parking lot and, and just tons of room. And that's the key. You, you cannot do this in an urban area. Uh, you've got to be out you know, at a racetrack like this or, or a fairgrounds or an old shopping center, and you can replicate this over and over. Now, as impressive as it is to see each one of these cars pull up and get that vaccine, consider this, there are still more than 200,000 people on a wait list to come to this very location and do that same thing. So the vaccine doses, the shipments, they can't come to Texas and be distributed soon enough. 
The organizers here tell me that if they had more of the vaccine, they could actually scale this up even more to treat more people at one time. And the county judge, who was a big part in helping make this effort take place, uh, this hits especially close to home as he spent seven days in a hospital suffering from COVID himself. To see people pull up, many of them have been in isolation for many, many months, living in fear, and to finally see light at the end of the tunnel and get their vaccination, it's a very emotional experience. And right now, organizers say so far, so good. The goal here at the Texas Motor Speedway, be open three days a week to distribute the about 30,000 doses of the vaccine they have, and they'll keep doing that as long as those shipments keep coming in. We'll send it back to you. Where does the White House proposal of sending a mask to every American stand, and how much would that cost if you followed through? Well, there are a range of options on the table to help protect more Americans from the coronavirus and encourage people to mask up. And as I said, that's vital to us because it's not just about the vaccine. It's also about social distancing, ventilation, and certainly wearing masks. Uh, but no decision has been made to do that. So I don't have a cost assessment. Obviously, it would depend on how many people would be sent a mask. All right, let's get to Dr. Ali Raja, Executive Vice Chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine at Massachusetts General Hospital, also co-founder of Get Us PPE. Dr. Raja, we are almost a year into the pandemic. Many of us wear masks every day. It's just part of our daily lives. But we know there are some people who still refuse to wear them. Do you think that sending masks to all Americans is a good idea and that it could make a difference? Allison, I really do. Uh, the fact is that some people don't have enough masks, and so it's important to send them for that reason. But the biggest reason is that by having the White House send them out to everybody, it emphasizes that masks are important. And aside from getting the vaccination, the single best way to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. A new clinical trial launched in the UK today. It mixes the vaccine so that participants get one dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca and a second dose of the Pfizer or vice versa. Why would they do that? What are they looking for here? This is all about building flexibility, Allison. The fact is that right now we okay. don't know what happens if you get one or the other instead of getting one both times. And so the UK is doing this trial that just started today. And if we don't have enough of a certain vaccine, having this kind of flexibility, if this trial works, to use a different vaccine could really help us out when, we're, when we don't have enough vaccine to go around. Now, the most important thing, though, is this is a trial. This is not free reign to start getting one vaccine and then getting the second shot of a different vaccine. This trial needs to happen first. Dr. Raja, at least 6% of people in every state in the U.S. have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine, according to the CDC. Not entirely great numbers. Where do you hope those numbers will be in the next couple of months? And what do you think we need to do to get there? Oh, this really needs to be much more coordinated. Thus far, for each state, it's hard to predict just how much vaccine you'll get. You just saw that great story about the Texas Motor Speedway. If they had more vaccine, they could vaccinate more people, but they don't know how much they're getting. I'd really like to see us to see uh, 20 to 30 percent of the population vaccinated in the next month or two. But in order to do that, we need a reliable supply to every state. More infectious COVID variants are spreading across the U.S. And so far, COVID vaccines seem to be working against them. But scientists are directing their attention to a tiny spike in proteins that cover the outside of the virus. I have no idea what this means. Can you explain that? And if this is something that we should be concerned about? Absolutely. So, Alison, the, if you think of the virus, we've all seen pictures of it online. It's kind of like a beach ball covered in these little spikes, which is, I guess, a horrible yep. beach ball. But, um, but those spikes <laughs> can change while the, the overall beach ball stays the same. Now, these vaccines cover most of those spikes, but we're starting to see some spikes that have less effective coverage by the vaccine. The Moderna vaccine, for example, is not so great against the variation that started in South Africa. And so what this means is that the more that we allow the virus to surge and then drop and surge again, the more times it can replicate and mutate. And what that means is, unfortunately, we're likely to need to get some boosters if these variations start spreading widely. 
Okay, I now understand what those proteins are all about. I won't forget that beach ball image. Uh, Dr. Raja, thank you so much uh, for all of your medical expertise. We really loved having you today. Thanks, Alton. Yankee Stadium turning into a mass vaccination site this Friday for residents of the Bronx only. It is welcome news for the New York City borough with a COVID positivity rate over 6%. Seniors there and across the U.S. have been saying that it's even harder to get their second COVID shot than their first. NBC News correspondent Gabe Gutierrez has more from East 161st. Allison, the Bronx has the highest positivity rate in New York City. And starting tomorrow, there will be a mass vaccination site here at iconic Yankee Stadium. 15,000 vaccine appointments in the first week. But nationwide, some seniors are saying that the hunt for the second dose is even harder than the first. From coast to coast, for many seniors, getting a shot in the arm has been a shot in the dark. Do you think it was easy to make an appointment? No, the program was really difficult and forget the telephone. The problem, not just the first dose, but now the second. In California, 76-year-old Marjorie Klein got her first Moderna vaccine dose at Dodger Stadium 11 days ago. But since then, she spent hours trying to sign up for another one. How confusing is the whole process? It's very confusing. It's first of all, it's confusing from the beginning to the end. It's kind of like you have to create your own roadmap. In Texas, about 6,000 people are overdue for their second doses. The CDC says for the vaccine to be most effective, people should get their second shot 21 days after getting the first Pfizer dose or 28 days after the first Moderna dose. In Florida, Beth Connolly of Sarasota says it's been a nightmare. It's literally like the Hunger Games, like you have to go through every hoop or, or you're going to not get your appointment. Patty and Alan Miller of Boynton Beach say they just got their second dose, but only after first being turned away from a mass vaccination site days ago. We have friends that went through to get their second shot and it took them five or six hours to get through the line. I mean, I just don't, don't understand that. I I can't understand how you can make seniors sit that long in a car for five or six hours to get a shot. The federal government says it's ramping up the amount of vaccine it's sending to states to make sure second doses are covered. Is this rollout going as well as you'd like? Well, look, I, I mean, it would be very easy for me to spend time on what, what was done not so well in the past, what could be improved in the past. But, you know, we're dealt with the cards that we're dealt with. Andy Slavitt is a senior COVID-19 advisor to the White House. We know there's a good deal of confusion out there. There's confusion of all, of all types. Um, and we're doing our best to straighten it out by providing clarity and more vaccines uh, out to the public. Again, Yankee Stadium will now join other stadiums across the country, including Fenway Park and Dodger Stadium as a mass vaccination site. It is still unclear when City Field will finally open here in New York. Allison. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.